Hello, this is Chess with Heirloom Leaves and Seeds, and today I wanted to talk a little bit about the flowers I grew last year. I already did a video about the ones I liked and will be growing again for 2024, but here are a few seven that I will not be growing for cut flowers. And just because they didn't work for me, that doesn't mean they won't work for you. We live in Tennessee in zone 7B, and you know, every climate is a little bit different. We're very hot and humid in the summer, and sometimes what works for me won't work for you, and what works for you won't work for me. But here's a few that I will not be growing and why. First on the list is dill. I grow bouquet dill and I love it. I just do. It's beautiful. It looks like a huge firework. But the reason that I am not going to be growing it for cut flowers is because the swallowtail caterpillars love it so much. <laughs> and let me tell you why this is a problem. Because I will try. I look at it, you know, and I'm like, I don't see anything. Well, in two instances, one, I had a bouquet left over from a farmer's market. I put it in our house. I sat it beside me on a table beside our couch in the living room. And I noticed that there was a little caterpillar. Another instance was this lovely lady um, lets me bring bouquets to kind of advertise that I will be at the farmer's market at her place of business in town. And I took one in and took the old one home. <laughs> it had a little tiny baby caterpillar on it as well. So even though I look and check, there's probably little tiny eggs on there that I'm missing and I want the caterpillars to stay outside, <laughs> not in people's homes. So I think I'm just going to grow the dill, but leave it in the garden. Okay, next on the list is Euphorbia, Snow on the Mountain. Now I love this. And when I grew it in my garden last year, just looking out into the garden, it was this beautiful patch of this white variegated foliage. And it was beautiful, I love it. And even when I did use it in some of the arrangements or cut flower bouquets, it was so beautiful and striking and I really like it. But the one bad thing about it is it drips white sap and it can get on you and it, um, some people can have a reaction to it. It may irritate them, whatever. But, and then even when you do put it into water, and even if you treat it the way you're supposed to, to prevent it from still dripping, it does turn the water like a white, milky color. And I'll put some pictures up here of it. And the pictures I show are from like directly cutting it. They haven't been seared still. I've heard horror stories of like brides getting the sap on them and them having a reaction. And there's so many flowers. I just don't want to have that worry. I will grow it for me because it's such a beautiful plant, but I think I'm going to pass on having it in bouquets. Next is Ageratum. This is easy to grow. It, produces big, huge flowers. But for me, it was just a little wimpy. I, I really struggled with cutting it. It would be covered in flowers. And then, you know, I'd kind of wiggle the stems kind of similar to like a zinnia when you would do the wiggle test. And the flowers would just, they were not sturdy. I'd bring them in and they'd end up drooping. And it was very frustrating, it aggravated me. I tried different things, different ways to treat them, and it just didn't work. And I just, I didn't need the aggravation, so I think I'm going to pass on them next year. Poppies? I love poppies, they're so beautiful. And the ones I grew last year was Angel's Choir. And they are gorgeous and bright colors, and they're so delicate and beautiful but they're a little finicky because you have to, like a poppy flower does not last that long. And even if you try, you gotta pick it in the correct bud stage and then you have to sear it. And it's a lot of fuss for a flower that only lasts a few days. So what I'm going to do this year, and I've already got them growing, is I'm going to try to do some bread seed poppies and I will use their seed heads 
and not worry about the flowers so much. Um, I think poppies is a beautiful flower. I mean, I love them, but I think I'm just going to focus on the seed heads instead this year. Next is sweet peas. Oh, I don't know. I'm on the fence of the, with these. I'm going to grow them again, but they may just be for me because last year they grew very well and did good, but they got covered in aphids. And I, it was a pain to kind of, you know, I tried spraying them with water and I don't use any chemicals of any sort, so I'm not doing that. But I tried spraying them with water, you know, kind of hand picking them off. And, you know, I tried some things and they just, the aphids were persistent. I think I'll just grow them for me before they get the aphids or maybe it was just a bad year. I don't know. I'm going to try them again, but on a smaller scale and possibly just for me. If they look good and don't have aphids, I will use them for sure. But that was a little disappointing last year, just the amount of aphids they had. Next on the list is phlox. I love the annual phlox. I tried growing cherry caramel and I think Isabellina, and they're beautiful, but the stems were always so short. And if you ever read about it, you definitely have to keep pinching them to encourage the long stems. But I just never really got some long usable stems. I had some, I do like the jelly jar size, and I could put some of those just on the edge, but they're a little finicky to germinate. And then with the constant pinching and then never really getting a lot of flowers from them, I think I'll pass. My compromise is I'm going to get some perennial phlox and hopefully those will do better for me. And the last on the list is calendula. Now I love calendula. It's a beautiful flower. It has lots of uses medicinally. I do have to research that. I don't know if it's all of like the calendula efficient. I don't know if all of them have the same medicinal properties. I do need to look into that, but the calendula I grew last year, one was ivory princess and it kind of did this weird thing. I'd cut it and the, the flowers would just kind of, they'd go in like this and they changed in their appearance. And plus they're a little sticky and I would cut them, I'd bring them in, I'd never use them. I don't, I just, they didn't work for me. Now I love to cut them and take their petals off and dry them. And I love to use them for that. So I think that's what I'm gonna stick with this year, but I'm not going to use them and cut flowers. But that's my list. And as you can see, a lot of it is just little things, nothing dreadful about them. They're all still very beautiful and I like them. It's just, they just didn't quite work for me. These are the ones that I will not be growing for 2024 for cut flowers. Let me know if you have any that you're cutting out of your garden this year and why. It'd be interesting to see what doesn't work for you as well. So I hope you guys have a good day and thank you for stopping by. Bye.